Thanks, Nathan. Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for uh, attending this webinar today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, climate change mitigation in mining and the framework that we have uh, recently uh, developed. So, thank you. Uh, so, climate change mitigation in mining has been a topic uh, with a lot of uh, discussions around it and it has represented to be quite a challenge for the mining industry. But the first question that one might ask is, why is it so important? Uh, the very simple and short answer is because mining is very important. In fact, mining has always been an integral uh, part of human civilizations and human populations uh, have always been defined by resource extraction. For example, we've had Stone Age or Bronze Age or Iron Age and uh, more recently our Industrial Age. And in fact, uh, the world economy has been quite linked with uh, resource uh, e extraction and that shows how the world economy has you know, improved so dramatically over the last 50 years. Mining uh, plays a critical role uh, in our daily life too, and it enables our modern life. Uh, it, mining plays an important role in increasing the quality of our life uh, and development of our smart cities. For example, uh, everything that, I, that we use nowadays in our modern life, such as our iPhones or laptops, they all use something from uh, mining to be developed. And also with the recent trend in development of uh, green technologies and renewable energies, mining will play a more important role in providing uh, infrastructure for uh, these uh, technologies. However, mining have also, has also shown to have uh, vulnerability to climate change even. So the interaction of climate change and mining is interesting because it has two sides. One side is the effect of mining on climate change, which we are familiar with. Uh, for example, the environmental impacts such as uh, greenhouse gas emissions or the impacts which uh, we can we will see we can see on water resources. However, on the other hand, we also have the effect of climate change on mining, which uh, has caused vulnerability to mining infrastructure. Uh, to example, a few, we have uh, uh, more strict uh, regulations for the mining operations or severe uh, weather events uh, due to climate uh, impacts that can disrupt the mining operations and that can affect, disrupt, or even stop uh, the production of minerals and metals or the shortage of water resources uh, for mining operations. Uh, this, is, this can be particularly important for regions who uh, are short in water resources, such as Chile, and the copper industry, for example, which is quite reliant on uh, use of water for their operations. Also, other impacts are, of climate change on mining is, for example, increasing the intervals between raining events, especially in dry areas, uh, which can cause uh, environmental issues such as in, in, uh, increased uh, acid mine drainage. So all of these uh, issues can put the future of mineral supply at risk. The other, the other uh, side is also the fact that the future of business growth and investment, not only in mining but in many industries, uh, has been at risk due to climate change even. Just uh, as an example, uh, earlier this year in January, uh, Black, the company BlackRock CEO Larry Fink uh, announced that BlackRock is uh, factoring climate change uh, into their uh, long-term uh, investment strategy. 
and they would make investment uh, decisions uh, with environmental sustainability as a core goal. And the reason why this was such an important event was that uh, such a move, uh, such a shift from uh, world's biggest fund management firm, so BlackRock uh, uh, controls about $7 trillion of global funds, and such a shift could reshape the future of investment in all industries, including mining, which can completely affect the future of uh, business growth in mining. Another uh, evidence was in this year's uh, conference of investment in investing in African mining in Dava, uh, where the climate change was a major agenda in the, in the conference, where, for example, Angelo American CEO spoke about the major challenges that the mining is, industry is currently facing in particular uh, climate change, and mentioned that climate change is one of the defining challenges of, of our time. And he also spoke about uh, Angelo's strategy to use uh, new technologies and new investment in uh, achieving their targets, including uh, significantly reducing their uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions. Uh, at the same time, other major global uh, miners have also publicly uh, stated uh, about their attempt in uh, reducing their footprints and uh, and also to 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 meet the decarbonization target, and they have uh, made uh, the investment uh, the investment strategies uh, accordingly. So as it's becoming you know apparent and more uh, increasingly established, you know uh, climate change accountability in mining uh, will support the future of. of uh, growth in, in mineral sector and ensures the security of, of uh, future of mineral supply. So there has been these commitments uh, from major mining companies as well as other organizations such as uh, Climate Smart Mining Program by, initiated by, by the World Bank or for example ICMM's position a statement on climate change. So the, the other issue is that despite all these uh, commitments and investments, there are still challenges uh, which the mining industry is facing to reduce the footprint, the carbon footprint. So what are, what are some of these uh, challenges? So the, the, the challenges are many, but to example a few, we have uh, one of the biggest challenges is increasing the demand for, uh, for the mineral supply. So as we all know, with the, uh, with the with the trend in, for example, uh, with the new trend for, for renewable energies and in general improving uh, development of technologies, the demand for mineral supply is increasing and is expected to increase even at a, at a higher rate uh, in, the, in the future. That will come with additional uh, footprint. Uh, also, another, some, other, uh, some other very important issues are decreasing ore grade, the quality of, of, of ore, and limitation of uh, water resources. So these are in particular uh, some major challenges for particular commodities such as copper sector. That means, for example, in comparison with 30 years ago, uh, in order to achieve the same quality of product using the same technologies, the requirement, the energy requirement, and water usage will be significantly more, which again comes with a with additional footprint. So these are some of the very important challenges uh, that industry is facing for reducing the footprint. Other challenges also, for example, there are, uh, there are lack of practical and economically viable solutions, and also the, there is lack of detailed knowledge on the carbon footprints of uh, various uh, mining. Uh, operation, which is caused by several factors which complicate uh, accurately uh, measuring and mapping the footprint of different op op operations. So it's a very simple concept. Uh, we cannot manage what we cannot appropriately quantify or measure. And we, as, uh, hence, we cannot uh, meet sustainability targets or uh, meet uh, emission reduction uh, targets without detailed insight into uh, these uh, missions. Uh, so in order to uh, address uh, this issue, we have uh, 
developed a, a, a greenhouse gas emission accounting for a framework for, to enable climate change mitigation, to support enabling climate change mitigation in, uh, in mining, which we have uh, recently published uh, our results in Nature Geoscience, which I will be briefly discussing in the next few slides. Uh, but uh, in, in short, the aim of this, uh, this framework is uh, the major aim of this framework is to improve our detailed understanding of emissions within the mining supply chain and it accounts for both sources and sinks of greenhouse gas emissions uh, to give us a good understanding of the, of the net emissions and it, uh, it is this, this, this part is very important that takes into account the context of the operation because, as I mentioned, one of the factors which complicate uh, mapping the footprint in, in, uh, in the supply chain is the complexity and all the factors, which all the different factors which affect the, the different operation, which I will explain more detail uh, in the next few slides. And it aims to identify a portfolio of mitigation opportunities which I, again, I will explain very shortly. So the first stage, at the first stage, uh, we uh, create a detailed supply chain model uh, that, as you can see here in this, uh, in this diagram, it takes into account different stages of the operation uh, from mining extraction, whether it's uh, underground operation, service mining, or even abandoned mine, uh, into uh, into the uh, life cycle of, uh, of minerals and metals. And we, the next stage would be collecting uh, data to uh, integrate into this model. This can particularly be a challenging, a challenging task uh, given the availability of such detailed uh, such detail, uh, greenhouse gas emission or uh, footprint uh, information. And this uh, helps us to identify uh, greenhouse gas emission intensity of various stages of the, of the operations. Uh, and it will, it, it's aimed to help us with mapping the footprint within the, within the supply chain. And uh, this framework uh, can be applied to different commodities. Uh, different climate contexts and different uh, individual operations. And this is the key. So this is the, the very important because uh, one of the main challenges which so, so far have prevented the industry to use the, this kind of approach <coughs> is that uh, the greenhouse gas emission intensity can vary significantly from uh, one operation to another. Uh, for example, uh, the mapping of footprint and the intensity of footprint in different stages of operation in copper can be quite different with, as we all know, with other commodities, let's say like, uh, iron ore mining or bauxite mining. Also, the, the footprint can also be quite different uh, in different climate contexts, uh, even uh, with the same commodity, for example, uh, comparison of copper mining in Australia or, you know, in uh, in US or in Chile uh, due to uh, many factors, for example, availability of water resources or the source of electricity, whether it is purchased electricity or whether it is on-site electricity and also all grade and all these, you know, affect these uh, operations can affect these operations uh, quite significantly. So it is. So the point that we are making here is that, uh, in order to achieve uh, such targets, it is very important that we develop uh, and apply this kind of framework to these operations individually and study them case by case. So in this particular case, we, for example, we used the Chilean copper mining data for demonstration of how. Uh, greenhouse gas emission intensity can be mapped through the, uh, the supply chain. So in the, ne uh, in the next stage, uh, we have identified, identified uh, four mitigation pathways, four climate change mitigation pathways as opportunities 
uh, for climate change mitigation and mining, including uh, fugitive emission reduction, resource efficiency, improved resource efficiency, better energy usage, and biological uh, solutions, solutions uh, which all of these either directly help uh, reduce the footprint of uh, carbon footprint of mining operations or they support indirectly by offsetting the, uh, the emission intensity and reducing the footprints of the operation. So this is, this, uh, this is very key, this is very important because uh, when we talk about reducing carbon footprint and uh, climate change mitigation in mining, Generally speaking, our uh, minds are focused on renewable energies. However, here we argue that while renewable energies are, uh, are very important and they should generally be considered as a major strategy in uh, climate change mitigation strategies, uh, however, in order to achieve the best outcome and the best uh, mitigation uh, results, uh, we need to consider a portfolio of, of these measures, which takes into account every all opportunities, uh, which we have listed, you know, examples here, uh, instead of singling out a single uh, opportunity, which will this this and this approach uh, not only will make uh, the investments uh, uh, to, to result in better outcome, also. It makes uh, the mitigation uh, mitigation strategies more, a lot more flexible. So the key points, uh, the key points that uh, about this uh, framework to take on is that this will this framework will uh, help us with uh, better monitoring, collecting, and assessing the emission uh, data. And it helps with identifying uh, emission measurement gaps uh, for different uh, operations. And it helps uh, identifying emission hotspots in different mining industry that will help us coming up with the best uh, mitigation opportunities and solutions uh, and help us where to focus to reduce the carbon footprints. And it helps us uh, by identifying and analyzing the best mitigation opportunities uh, with respect to limitations on available technologies because as I mentioned earlier, uh, the context can be, you know, can be quite different in different, uh, for different commodities or different uh, climate contexts. And also, it will help us with providing a more systematic way of thinking about approaching uh, emission reduction opportunities associated uh, with, the, with the mining uh, operations. So about, uh, about our uh, working progress and future development in, development in this area, we are aiming to apply uh, this framework to different operations. And the idea is to provide and develop a tool for mapping uh, carbon footprint for different mining operations uh, and creating uh, detailed uh, emission inventories for different levels of operation, for example, uh, sites or major processing units or miner and so on. So, and uh, also it helps us with comparing and benchmarking the emissions that will help us to see for example, where is my operation? You know, stands and compares with the rest of uh, with the rest of the operations, or how is this particular unit perform uh, respectively to other uh, similar units in, in within the operation in terms of carbon footprint? And it, in general, it helps us with understanding uh, how a site operation and unit performs. And this is again uh, very important because one of the problems that currently exist is that there is no definitive standard or measure of how good or bad is a carbon footprint of a particular mine. When can I say my operation uh, is good in terms of, of carbon footprint? So this, will, uh, this approach will help the, the industry by 
defining and shaping such, uh, such a standards of carbon footprint. Also, uh, we are working in further developing uh, identifying climate change reduction opportunities uh, in, with, uh, in the context of the mitigation pathways that uh, we discussed. And uh, the next stage would be also evaluating the cost of implementing, uh, implementing this carbon footprint reduction uh, opportunities, which is, uh, which is always a, a major, major part uh, to successfully implement uh, this, uh, these opportunities. And also, it helps us with understanding various underlying factors, uh, as, uh, as we just discussed that always complicates the carbon footprint of different operations. And again, this is perhaps one of the most challenging uh, parts because again, uh, for, for different operations, depends on where the energy source is, uh, whether it's purchased electricity on site, you know, electricity, the cost, the cost can be different or the location of the operation, uh, which can add to the transport cost and additional footprint and again, or grade uh, can again have uh, can be different in different operations, and that will again affect uh, the processing cost and, and footprint. And this is also this framework will also support the mining industry for future mine planning because uh, understanding the full carbon budget of extraction uh, will be a very important uh, for future. Um, mine planning in considering a range of uh, potential uh, supply sources and uh, processing uh, technologies. Thank you very much for your attention.